Hi, my name is Norman and welcome to Best Incorporated's video on equipment and materials that you might need in your workspace. I'm an IPC master instructor for J Standard, which deals with process control. So we would be talking a little bit about equipment in the environment and everything. I'm 610 certified as a master instructor, which deals with uh, how components should be placed on the circuit board. I'm 771121 master instructor, which deals with rework and repair. So I would be dealing with a lot of equipment and varieties. 620 wires, cables, and harnesses, and also 6012, which deals with board fabrication and design. Okay, so what we're going to start off with, we're going to start very simple and work our way to all this equipment that you see before us. Okay, so enjoy the moment and hopefully it'll give you a better idea of what you need to do your job. Okay, start off with static electricity. Cell phones. Remember the original cell phones? Big pieces. Didn't do a lot. Had buttons on the front. They stayed charged only for about an hour, hour and a half. That was it. Now, this one can last all day or more. I can do so much with it. I can check the weather. I can call my wife. I can text her. Uh, I can find out where my kids are even located at on these things. So it's really great. But technology's gotten smaller and smaller, so what we gotta watch out for is static electricity. And to do all of my work with, I first I use a mat. Okay? You can see one here is on my tabletop right here, and this is sort of what it looks like. It has a mesh material in it, a little clamp, and it actually would snap in something like this one. Then what I do is I have a wrist strap on, okay? And then all I've got to do is plug it in just like this. Now I have become ESD safe. And I can hear and do work on my boards or whatever I want to do all day long. And I don't have to worry about causing damage to that board as far as static electricity goes, okay? So let's keep that very simple. I'm going to take this off right now and then we're going to go into the next phase of how we're going to do our job, okay? Well, to see our job, let's talk about that. You see these guys laying right here. I've even got magnifiers right here, okay? What I'm trying to do is see my job. You got to see what you're doing, correct? Well, you got a variety of them. This is a ring lamp magnifier. You can see the big magnification in here. This is a higher end dollar item. It does have lighting built into it. And they come in a variety of sizes and shapes, but also magnification. And that's your biggest concern is magnification. So you want to make sure you got one that you can really see the job with. Well, you don't need just to buy this one. You could actually buy this one right here off of eBay or on the internet, very inexpensive. And in the center of it also, it has a magnifier. Even though this is magnification, it has a higher magnification right here in the very middle. So you can buy something like this and also plug it in. It has a lighting system that goes with it also. That's another item that you can purchase. Or you can do these. Latest in fashion, I can sit here and do my job. I can watch what I'm doing with ease. And these come in a variety of magnifications also. So it's what you want to do to do that job with. Okay, so we talked about that. Now, if you don't do any of that, a lot of times I recommend some type of eye protection. That way, if you're doing here, anything that flies up might hit you in the face or in the eye. You want to keep it from doing that because you're going to do so many different things at one time, possibly. Or somebody beside you might be doing something and parts are flying to you. So you got to protect the eyes, okay? So we've got that, and then we've got this, okay? This is a microscope, okay? We can focus it right here. We can increase our magnification right here, whatever we want to do. Okay, we can move them in and out for our beady eyes or fat faces is what I call them. Okay, I'm a medium sized face. And it's got a lighting system here on the bottom too. So I can sit here and do my job right underneath there. Okay, these range in cost. Whatever you want to pay for it is what you can. Go on the internet and look them up. Okay, there's a lot of good websites for magnification. So now we've talked about was the mat. We talked about what, how to see our job and good lighting at our work surface. 
Now, as we're doing the job a lot of times, we create a lot of fumes, right? So let's move this out of the way. One of the systems out there is a fume extraction. And this is what we use here at best. It is, a, it is an all-in-one system. It goes around my classroom in here right now. And you can keep it right down here and you work. And it sucks the nasty fumes away from you, doesn't it? And that's what you want it to do. Okay, that is one way. Another one is very cheap and inexpensive is a fan system. Okay, now if you take this fan and blow it directly to where you're working at to blow them this way away from you, guess what it's doing? It's cooling it down at the same time. So you don't want it to go that direction. So you turn it the opposite direction. The fan is going away from you like this. It's going away. But guess what? This just became an extraction system. So it's pulling the fumes this direction and then away. And that's what you want it to do, right? Okay. So that is a couple of ways. And again, it's what you want to pay for. So next thing we've got to talk about is some of the tools that we can do with. Um, we've got nice little diagonal cutters here. And what do I use them for is I don't like to cut my solder off the spools. I actually use it for my solder wick. The, what is solder wick used for? Okay, it is to clean the pad sites. It comes in a variety of sizes. I've got a number one here very, very thin. Then I've got a number three here, twice the thickness or three times the thickness actually. Okay, so I use, it depends on the size of the pad where I'm working is the size of solder work I'm going to use. I always put a little bit of flux on here and we'll talk about flux here in a minute. And it goes straight down, straight up. Do not slide it around because that could damage the solder mask or lift the pads. And then you're like, oh no, now I've damaged this, this cell phone. Now I got to tell the customer that Sorry, that cell phone's no good. Oh, sorry, Johnny, your game system can't be reworked anymore because there's some pad damage in there. You know, I caught it when I was looking at it. Okay, so be very careful with that. But nice, good diagonal cutters. Needle nose pliers because you might have to be in there to pull something. So be very careful with these. I use them for a lot of other things, more through hole and wires more than anything. Then I have a good variety of tweezers. I got some really thin ones here. I got some medium ones here. And then I've got some really micro ones. So if I'm doing fine pitch components like uh, O201s, and that is a like a size of a chip resistor or capacitor. It's in hundreds of an inch. The first two digits are its length. The second two digits are its width. And I've got to get in there and get these parts out of there. So I've got to be very careful. So I'm going to use tweezers to do this with. I also use the next size up, possibly, is to remove a connector with a hot air system, which we will talk about later, and is how to get that part off of there without causing any damage. So tweezers work great. Sometimes I have to use a dental pick to get some things going. So that's what I have in my tool drawer. Okay. And an acid brush here. And that's to clean my board with, which we'll talk about here in a few minutes with the alcohol. And then the last and final thing that I have is an orange wood stick. And that's like if there's any conformal coating or some rubber sealant I want to get off the board. And I'll use a hot air system and I'll just go in there. Remember, wood is not going to damage your board. So go in there and do a little bit of rubbing on there. Be gentle. So that's the main tools that I have. Next tool that we talk about is the solder itself. Okay, this is wire wound solder. I use a .010 or .015 for all surface mount because you don't need a lot of solder in there. Little dab will do you. It's not a big blobulous mass that you need to see. So that's what I use it and I use it with a center core flux and it works great. So there's that and that. And how do I hold this, by the way, is some people, they're afraid they're going to burn their fingers. They got two or three inches out of the way. I'm within a half inch or so when I'm down there soldering some of my stuff. Also, what you can purchase is a, a solder paste out there. And it comes in little tubes or you can get it in a little container. And you might use a stencil to put solder paste into the little areas. Okay, it depends on what you want it to do. Okay, I use a variety. Okay, and in commercial product, by the way, and I've seen this, some people are going to Radio Shack and buying lead solder. 
commercial industry since 2006 has been mandated by Rojas that we should be all lead free. So commercial products, uh, the camcorder I'm using right now, the TV monitor that is there, uh, game systems, cell phones, televisions, um, what else is out there? There's so many. This ring lamp is lead free. Uh, my soldering equipment's all lead free internally because Rojas has mandated that since 2006. Okay, so we've soldered and everything now. Now we've got to clean it, okay? Um, I use isopropyl alcohol, okay? And all I do is lift that top up, press down, and then there's a bath alcohol. I use my acid brush, dip it into it, scrub that little board area, and then as I'm scrubbing it, I grab a chem wipe real quick, and I dab it dry. Because all you're doing with the alcohol is you're diluting that flux. So you need to clean that out of there because flux can create contamination. So you got to be very careful with the flux. So acid brush, alcohol, chem wipes, and these are lint-free cloth. And that's what you want to make sure that you have, lint-free. Don't use that paper towel off the wall or go to the bathroom and grab that paper towel. You want to make sure it's lint-free. Okay. Now, this I didn't mention, but I will real quick, is flux. Flux enhances wetting action. And what does that mean? It allows the solder to flow out a little bit easier. It releases a little bit of that surface tension of the metal area, so it allows it to go and move outward a little bit. Okay? And I use a little bit, I use a needle on the top of it, so I don't use a lot of it. And it also has an acid in it that cleans a little bit in there too, so you need a little bit of the contamination, you can help get rid of it with this. Not guaranteeing it every time, but it can help. Okay, so now we've got this. Let me move this out of the way. Let's get this out of the way. Now, let's go on. Equipment. How am I soldering? There's two basic ways to solder. Conductive and convective. Conductive. What is that? That's soldering irons that we want to use, okay? They can vary or be in a variety of shapes and sizes, like this little guy right here, okay? Doesn't cost a lot, around $100 or so. And then you've got this nice big one up here, which is a little over $700 to $1,000. It depends on what you want to purchase. And they got a variety of ranges, because here's another soldering system too. And this is mid-range. So you can go in a variety of ranges here to do equipment, okay? You want to make sure that it is a controlled, heated system. That is your priority. And the next thing you want to do is make sure about these systems is that you have a variety of tips to do the job with, okay? Just don't want to use one tip. I use a good variety of them to do my job. From small little fine needles to very wide ones out there. And this is a wide one, but I've actually seen them a lot wider. It just depends on what I'm doing. Okay, now let's talk about this and the holder a little bit here. Okay, now you see in both of them, let's bring the other one out here. There's the other one. Is you notice that it has like a Brillo pad in both of them. It has a sponge in both of them also. Okay, and what you want to do with these sponges is you want to dampen them. Don't oversaturate. So that's what the water is for. It's not to drink. Okay, so we dampen this because what we do is when we're getting ready to solder, we actually clean it into the center of the hole just like that. Go to the outer edge, finish cleaning it. Then we go in there and do our soldering, whatever we want to do, and then we're done. But you're saying, okay, what does that do? Well, this cleans the impurities out of it. This one here, you go in there like that, it cleans the solder off, that's all it does. Then you hit that, and then you go in there and solder. But before you put this tip back away, you grab that solder and you saturate this. Because that helps prevent it from oxidizing. What do you mean oxidizing? Very simple. If this was my iron here, and I go to this pad site and solder, heat transfers very easily through there. There's no barrier, in and out. Now, if I take a chem wipe here, 
and pretend it's oxidized now, just something like that. Now, is that directly touching that pad site? No. So now you're not getting a good heat transfer through. So now it's going to take a lot longer to heat up, or it might not heat it up at all, and you get what they refer to as a cold solder joint or non-wetting. So you got to be very careful with that. So what if that occurs? Very simple. They make this stuff called tip cleaner. It comes in a little container about like this and you can stick your iron in it and clean it up really good and it does really quick. But there's acids in there and you got to be careful with this because they can re reduce the thickness of the plating on these tips. So you got to be careful with that. What I like using is this guy right here. This is a brass brush. See I can scrub my hand and look I'm not bleeding or anything like that. But I take it and I go away from the body like, like just like this and clean that tip of any oxidization. Then I'm going to grab some solder and saturate that and make sure it's solderable at the beginning of the soldering process again. And that's all I have to do about these. These are my conductive systems. I'm making direct contact with the area where I'm soldering. Okay? Good. Now, the other systems out there. Hot air. Different ways you can do it. Okay, you can use again this system right here. It does have a control, and I can control my airflow by adjusting this. And it's a pencil, and I hold it, and I can go into a specific area and heat that little area up. I go in a circular motion, I start up high and work my way in to about 0.5 centimeters away. It starts to reflow. Remember them little tweezers? Grab that part right off of there. Then I use my regular iron and I clean the pad sites with my solder wick, a little bit of flux on there, and I clean that up. Okay, that's one method of hot air. Or if I'm doing like that big connector that, I was, that I'm going to show you here in a minute, okay, right here, you've seen these guys. I know you have. What are they? That's right. They're the battery connection, right, to charge it, the charging port. So if I'm in there with that hot air, I'm going to leave this flat and I'm going to come down in here and I'm going to go in a circular motion, again starting out high, and I work my way in close and then it goes into reflow. I grab my tweezers and pluck that right out of there, okay? But if I do it just bare area a lot of times, what happens is it reflows everything, doesn't it? Yeah, we know that. So what I've got here is something that we have here in Best. It's called a heat shield we manufacture. Okay, it's a fibrous type material. I wrap Kepton tape around it, and then you see what I've done. That way I can keep it to the board, and I'm isolating only the area where I'm reflowing. And on this side, I'm getting all the full airflow. It might be four, five, six hundred degrees of airflow through there, you know. But guess what? On this side, it's not even that. I've done it at uh, 300 degrees Celsius on this side, and on this side, where, I'm, where the parts are and everything, less than 90 degrees Celsius. So you're not putting anything into reflow, and it protects all that area. So I can get that part out of there without causing any issues whatsoever. And this is, a, I really like it. It's a heat shield because I'm used to doing it the old school way, and then you're getting all these components all around here into reflow at the same time because there is other components there. So you got to be very careful with that. And this heat shield works rather nice, and you can cut it to form it to the area where you dump, tape it up, and away you go. Very simple to work with. So we've talked about air flows, heat shields, everything like that. Again, you want a good variety of tools to do your job with to make it that much easier. Dry, what is it always saying is work smart, not hard. In other words, make it easier on yourself. So that's why we're showing you a good variety of equipment and materials to utilize in your workspace so we can make your job that much easier. Okay? Well, I hope you've enjoyed this video. My name is Norman Meir, and thank you for watching this video from Best. And you have a nice day. Bye.